a very, very warm welcome wherever you are in the world. Whether you're a Springbok fan, a British and Irish Lions fan, simply a rugby fan, welcome to the Boschendal Wine Estate in the heart of South Africa's winelands in the Cape. And welcome to a very special conversation with a quartet of Springbok superstars, and a gentleman who looks like he could be a Springbok superstar, but he decided to make some wine. I'm Danny, thank you for joining us. Jean Folio is with me, and it's just a moment, Jean, and I'll be talking about a couple of the wines we have with us here today, one of them being the Black Angus, a big bruising forward of a red wine, and the Stellenbosch Cabernet Sauvignon, a new addition to the Bosch and range that has been taking the wine world by storm. I think it's almost sold out in the UK. Uh, so if you are in the UK, then find those bottles quickly before the rest of them are gone. Our guests today, well, we've got four of them ahead of the second test of the Castle Lager British and Irish Lions series. They are two of the bigger gentlemen we have in World Rugby. We have Marco von Stalin and Jasper Visa, who will be making his debut this weekend, very excitingly so. And then a little later on, we will be catching up with both Elton Yankees and Malcolm Marks. Very excited to chat to the two 2019 World Cup winners as well. But let's start uh, with Jasper and with Marco. We have been speaking to the two of them just a few moments ago on a conversation uh, with some of our Washington guests. But now as we open up to the broader world, a uh, similar question to start off, Jasper, but I think it's it's worth reaffirming because this is just such a special weekend for you. You're making your test debut. Has it sunk in yet? Are the butterflies all over the place? How nervous, how excited is your Yasper Visa? Yeah, Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've lost Yasper and Marco. Uh, either that or they look very different to the last time I saw them. So my apologies there. I think we've had a, uh, an explosion in our play. So we'll catch up with Marco and with Jasper momentarily. We uh, do have those two 2019 World Cup winners. So hello, Malcolm Marks and hello, Austin Yankees. Uh, lovely to, to see you both and welcome on. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, I'm afraid you don't have wine. We do. So we're drinking on your behalf. Uh, very selflessly. Uh, Elton, let, let's kick off with a, uh, a look at this particular series. You've done so much in rugby, you've won a World Cup, you've played all over the world here in South Africa, uh, played in Europe. What does this British and Irish Lions series and being part of it mean to Elton, the rugby player? Yeah, it's quite a, a, quite a unique and special tournament. Um, like we all know, it only happens every 12 years that you get the opportunity to play against uh, four different nations. Um, but yeah, it's it's like me and Malcolm just spoke before. Um, I was at school um, when I last see, seen um, British and Irish Lions playing the Springboks. So yeah, it's quite special to actually be part of it. And it's very special just for us as fans to watch it. There seems to be a, a, an electricity, even though we can't be in the, in the stadiums. Malcolm, if you look back two years ago, the famous win in Tokyo, winning that World Cup, is it possible to compare, contrast the feeling of playing for your country in the World Cup versus playing for Springboks against the British and Irish Lions? Um, yeah, obviously it's different without the crowd um, and all of that, but my opinion, it's always special to put on a Springbok jersey, no matter whether there's crowds or, or no crowds or anything. Um, yeah, 2019 was very, very special. And uh, yeah, I think every single time I put on the Springbok jersey, I feel honor, I feel honor and privilege, and there's, I've got a job to do. So um, regardless of who's there or who's around us, it's it's the 23 guys that are in your team for the weekend. Um, I think that matter. What about the, the sense of heritage? We, we speak a lot, Jacques and I do a lot about this, this sense of history. Boschendal has came back to 1685. This British and Irish Lions tour has been going on for so long. It's one of the cornerstones of rugby as we know it. Do you remember, Malcolm, the, the first time you saw a British and Irish Lions series and, and having it spark your interest and imagination as a young rugby player? Um, I think I was in grade nine the last time they were here. Um, many years ago <laughs> from now uh, it was but um yeah it was it was quite a while ago it was in 2009 um yeah probably quite a few memories obviously Mone staying kicking that kicking that penalty and um Joel Curry scoring the try in the corner um 
Oh, quite a few little memories that I can remember from back then. <laughs> And, uh, and more being built as this particular series unfolds. Uh, Elton, we, we chatted a little earlier to both Marco and to Yasmin. We were asking them about some of their best rugby memories, the memory of memories which would uh, represent a great bottle of wine and a pouring glass to celebrate. If you look back on your career, you've done so much. Which is the game? Which is the performance where afterwards you felt, you know, this is the one you'd be opening a really special bottle. This was Elton Yankees at his best. <laughs> it's going to sound funny, but uh, for me personally, as an achievement, was um, 2019, uh, the World Cup final. I know I had a different role that I had to play, and and that was off the field or being a water boy. But yeah, that was something that was yeah, it was very special for me. And and just that words of of finally um, being at a World Cup and then obviously lifting the trophy with the boys that was quite special for me in a rugby environment. It's very special for the rest of us watching back here in South Africa, as is watching this particular series. We get to see you for 80 minutes, Elton, maybe a couple more, and the odd glimpse uh, through platforms like this. Most of this series is spent training, preparing in a very different set of circumstances. What has it been like building up to this series and the, the strange world we live in? And, uh, and has your role been even more important given your experience in keeping everybody going and happy and focused and, uh, and together in this bubble? It's a difficult one to answer. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. You plan your your whole uh, your whole rugby career on, on on certain individual achievements and and being part of the Springboks and 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 then something happens like after World Cup where we were actually championships and then COVID stroke. So yeah, things things change a little bit in terms of your individual perspective, um, and then. In the back of your mind, you still have to play for your union and then building towards a, a British and Irish Lions tour, tournament. Um, there was still uh, chats about, is it going to happen, is it not going to happen? But you as an individual have to stay focused and and just make sure that you put yourself in the best position to actually represent your country. And yeah, finally we got to it and we got together as a group. Uh, a few challenges and a few learnings. Um, we have to adapt as quick as possible because... Um, in the period that we're living now, um, yeah, everything changes within in minutes. Malcolm, given you guys are together on top of each other all the time, I'd imagine it'd be quite easy to go a little mad sooner or later. Uh, who, who are the best guys to be hanging out with in this squad, just to keep you sane and to and to keep you smiling? Um, I don't think anybody's going mad yet, um, to be <laughs> honest. But, um, Must well yeah, work. no, I think I think everybody's got. Got their own different character you know and i think that's what makes us pretty strong as a group um everybody does their own thing everybody knows when <laughs> when they want to spend time alone or nobody bother them or or something like that but um yeah i think there's a bunch of different characters to keep us all sort of sane it's uh, a different tour uh, but uh, it's one i think everybody's learning from uh, i want to talk about wine with you for just a second job very quickly uh the uh, the two wines we've got here uh, start with the Black Angus because it reminds me a bit of uh, Malcolm Marks there. It's big, it's strong, it's still quite smooth. <laughs> Pretty special red blend. Look, uh, as Dan, like I said, the uh, Black Angus is the signature um, blend for Boschel. Um, it's a phenomenal wine. It's a wine made specifically from the Stellenbosch wine region. You try to narrow it down slightly more. It's made from the Holgerberg in Stellenbosch itself. Um, it's big and it's bold, but it's also classic and elegant, you know. So uh, it is Shiraz lead or Shiraz lead. 64% uh, of this blend is Shiraz. Um, and uh, and then it's back with some border varietals, like a little bit of Merlot, a little bit of Malbec, and some Petit you know, with some beautiful structure. So, you know, you can, a blend is like a, like a team at the end of the day. So you've got guys keeping it together. And um, yeah, just a phenomenal wine. It's awesome. I hope that these get the, the, the box get to, to taste this wine as well. And um, I love it. It's, uh, this is a wine that I dream about. Uh, this is what I want to stand for. So it's just like these guys, you know, just to be part of a stream of team. It's just it's phenomenal. It's a dream come true. So to make this wine is also part of my dream. <laughs>
But Malcolm, I know when it's the regular season, you live on a diet of salad, smoothies, and yoga. <laughs> uh, but when it's uh, off season, you've got a little bit of a gap. Is there a, a glass of red wine around the bright at the weekend? Um, yeah, we well, obviously have been able to have, have many bras with uh, with all the lockdowns and all of that. But yeah, I think uh, there has been, obviously been a glass or two of wine going around. <laughs> it uh, can only help with the performance. I highly endorse it from my scientific <laughs> point of departure. Uh, the other one we've got a shot is this Cabernet Sauvignon. And this reminds me a bit of Alton because it's, it's very classy. It's, uh, it's very smooth. It uh, wins you over. Uh, quite quickly, and it's got a bit of a commanding presence. And it's a very special point. You really just bought it out. Yeah, look, we've been, we've been doing care for quite some time, and I've been looking at Cabernet Sauvignon specifically for Black Angus itself. But by doing that, working with a specific area, specifically in Stellenbosch, once again, the foothills of the Alderberg and the Alderberg itself, I've just realized that there's something that's so, so special. And once again, it's like a you know, if you had to put a signature to Stellenbosch itself, often people would say on the red wine side, it's Cabernet Sauvignon. So once again, a dream come true. Um, the Cabernet Sauvignon, it's a, it's classic, but it's it's still it's big and it's bold and it's it's so smooth and elegant. It's got that beautiful um, finesse to it as well. It's got longevity, so this wine ages extremely well and. Um, it's got that very typical Cabernet Sauvignon, that black currant blueberry, but with that cigar box stone, a little bit of that lead pencil, uh, pencil shade is good as well. So once again, a, a dream come true. It's a wine that, that is phenomenal for Boschnall. It's a great celebration of South African wine. I'm interested, Elton, you recently spent some time in France. Uh, it's such a big part of the French culture, food and wine. Uh, did you get the chance to sample a little French wine? And is some of it almost as good as South African wine? To be honest, I'm not a, um, I'm not a experienced wine drinker, but I had a, I had a few glasses of wine in France, and um, yeah, that's not my trade. I'm um, having wine, so I can't comment too much about it. <laughs> Well, we'll take that as a yes, South African wine is better. Perfect. Great answer there, Alton. Uh, on that subject of food and wine, not so much wine, but maybe if, uh, if you're having a dinner, uh, if you were to get together, Elton, three people from the world of rugby, guys you played with, guys you played against, uh, guys who maybe inspired you when you were a, a young aspiring player, who would those three rugby guests be joining you for dinner at Chateau Elton? Oh, tough question. Um, is that to have a glass of wine <laughs> on a dinner uh, table? A glass of wine. <laughs> um, just your three favourites would be, I suppose. Okay, Malcolm. But if I go with Malcolm, I have to go with a combination. So I'll say Malcolm, Kyle, and Dylan. <laughs> Well, he's, uh, he's twice your size, he's sitting right next to you, so that's probably a, a shrewd, shrewd answer. Uh, what about you, Malcolm, if you're having three people around for dinner and a glass of wine, uh, people you've played with, played against, inspired you in your career, uh, who would those three be for you? Um, yeah, it is quite a tough one. Um, mm. I'll choose Alan now because you chose me first. So. <laughs> um, then... Um, Probably guys that I looked up to that were playing maybe in 2009, a guy mm. like John Smith, maybe. Um, who else? Bucky's Buerta. That is a fairly heavyweight quartet. You're not messing yeah. with any of those before. Uh, it's, uh, it's been great having some time with you guys. We're uh, unfortunately almost at an end, but we do have a, a couple of quick questions uh, just before we wrap up. Uh, and just on a, a more a specific basis, as you build up to the weekend, uh, I know, Elton, when we see you on the field, you're, you're very specific and very focused. You've got things you always do when you're building up to a kick. What about before the game? What's the, the match day ritual for you uh, the night before the game and then the day of the game? No, he said you. Oh, uh, me? Yes. We, uh, we can take it from both of you. Uh, let's yes. start with you, Malcolm. What's your Friday, um, Saturday match, though? Past number, yeah. Yeah, so the night, the night before, <laughs> again, I don't know, I've, I've sort of done it 
ever since um, I left school. I always eat uh, quite a big pasta the night before. I don't know if it's just a mental thing that I'm, or maybe just the fact that I love Italian food. But um, yeah, I generally eat a, a big bowl of pasta. I try to get um, probably around 10 hours sleep. Um, and then, yeah, what, what else do I do? Oh, um, eat pasta again the next day. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I, all I do. Expect an angry message on Twitter from Tim Noakes uh, by the end of today. Uh, so nice to establish. What about you, Elton? Is, is there anything that over the career has become, I must do this because it's a big game coming up? It's quite simple. I think it's my haircut <laughs> on <No> Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, is there a specific barber? Do you have a lucky one who has to travel with you and make sure it's all just right? Yeah, I try and stick to the to one barber in Johannesburg, but I don't have one that I travel with. But I've made a few relationships in Durban, Cape Town, so I've got people that I can call that can come to the hotel and quickly give me a cut. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and after you got off the rugby, we've seen you play, and we're very, very happy with that. Uh, final question for each of you, just before we wish you good luck, I'll give you a piece of good news, which is quite exciting. Uh, starting with you, Elton, uh, the toughest opponent that you've ever played against in your rugby career, and the best wingman to have on the rugby field who's, who's always got your back when you're playing. Yes, there's a few wingmen, so flip but... Um, I'll go with Warren Whiteley. There's a lot of uh, reasons why. Uh, he's my go-to. And then, uh, toughest rugby player. It's difficult for me to say individually um, because they always target the flower of the, of the, of the team, the opponents. Um, but I have to say in terms of when it comes to rugby, um, probably Matt Guitar. I feel... Um, his space awareness and the way he communicates on the field and, and making sure that he puts guys into space and he plays a good tactical game as well. Much like yourself, Mr. Yanchi. So there's a strong comparison there. Great selection. Uh, Malcolm, in closing for you, uh, the toughest guy you've had to pack down against in the front row. And then who's the player, the teammate from your career who you'd most love to have beside you at the bottom of a rut, just in case things get a little unfriendly? Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a few guys that are tough uh, that I've played against. Um, I think the, the two New Zealand hookers, uh, Cody Taylor and, and um, Dane Coles, they're quite tough. August, Augustine Creevy's um, tough. Um, yeah, I think those three are, are, and again, the South African hookers, when you play again, when you play the local derbies, um, well, back in Super Rugby, when you played the local derbies just before you head abroad or, or when the other sides come to South Africa. Um, so there's definitely quite a few that I've played against that's, that's made it difficult for me. Um, and then somebody that I'd like to have next to me, probably a guy like Sos. Um, mm -hmm. just doesn't stop. Um, Quacha, it's pretty much the same. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'll have to go with Sos. <laughs> Well, I suspect if I ask the same question, the rest of your teammates, your name would probably come up pretty often as well. Yes, and guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. I know it's a busy week building up to a test match, and we really appreciate the time that you've taken out. And as a small thank you for joining us, we're going to be sending you a little gift. Poshanel, in celebration of the British and Irish Lions Tour, has brought out a commemorative magnum of wine, so double the usual volume. And we're going to be sending one of those off to both just as thank you for joining us today. And an extra little good luck message for you for this weekend for that second test. So uh, good luck with it. Uh, enjoy the game. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being rugby proud and the Springboks proud and for being part of our evening session today. And Malcolm and Elton, thank you both very much indeed. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Rob. So there we go. Malcolm, Marks, and Elton Yanchi joining us and joining rugby fans right around the world. Uh, before we say goodbye to you and uh, uh, remind you of one or two great offers you must keep an eye out for, uh, uh, just a message, Jacques, on behalf of Boschendale, uh, to the Springboks, but also the British and Irish Lions, uh, just in terms of what it means to have this series going, giving them 
degree uh, and what's now being able to be quite something so special. I just want to say to everybody, you know, you guys inspire, inspire us as a, as a team here at Bolton itself. We all have a team. Uh, it was so wonderful. Like I said, I mentioned today, um, we've been bottling the new Black Angus vintage. And was just awesome just listening to the guys, just chatting up the and spirit on the thing. They can't wait for the Saturday. It's, it's, it's awesome to be part of something that, that is great and that inspires and that lifts the mood. Um, so it, it's it's really nice. I just want to say thank you to all you guys. It's it's awesome watching you. Um, it's really nice um, just being a South African, uh, great sportsmanship and all of that. So it's amazing just to be a sponsor of that. It's it's also a big country for us. You know, to be part of this, to chat with the guys um, on Facebook and and so forth. So yeah, it's awesome. Well, there we go. I mentioned those commemorative magnums. Those are available. So uh, jump online onto the Washington website, have a look at the shop. Uh, and as well as those commemorative magnums, there's also the range of wine here, the Black Angus, which is fabulous. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from a lot of friends around the world. Uh, the Nicholas, we haven't really had a chance to chat about, but also another great South African blend as well as the rest of the Boschendale wines. And that does it. We say goodbye to you from Boschendale. It's been a pleasure having all of you join us from wherever you are around the world. A big thank you to our Springboks for being part of this evening's conversation. Best of luck to both teams this weekend. And whenever you are around the world, I'm hoping that you're raising a glass of Boschendale, enjoying the rugby, and paying tributes to great, great teams and a wonderful tradition of rugby that speaks to the very same values of the heritage, history, and legacy here at Bosch and Bell. Jacques, I want to make a thank you so much for being with us. And uh, oh, we actually, I think we have our two players back. We extend this a moment. This is fabulous news. I thought we were wrapped up. Uh, but let's check in. I think we have uh, Mark and Yasser, they come back. They were so this element to talk more about wine that they've come running back. Although I can tell you, I've just got a package through. I've also got management. Yasser and Mark have actually been in the car park of the hotel, bench pressing the team bus while they have been waiting and they haven't even broken sweat. They're looking so fabulous. Guys, uh, welcome back. We got a chat to you uh, with a couple of our clients and customers a little earlier, but now's the chance to talk to you here uh, on our platform on Facebook right around the world. And I'm very excited to be able to do so. And very excited, similarly to what we said a little earlier, yes, but to just congratulate you on such wonderful news. Give it to us. How excited, how nervous is Jasper Visa feeling at the moment? It's like, oh, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> um, you yeah, uh, excited, nerves, everything. Um, I mean, to be a part of this is, is really big. And um, yeah, I'm just, I think the nerves will take care of itself and um, just be ready for Saturday when, when we get on the field to just give everything, leave nothing out there. Yeah. Mark, is this the sense you've played enough rugby, you've played around the world, you've played through those frameworks? Does it still get exciting every game? Are the butterflies still there? Does it still uh, give you goosebumps when you pull on that Springbok jersey? Yeah, I know for sure. Um, I mean, every game, every opportunity you get in a Springbok jersey is a massive privilege and honor. So, uh, yeah, every chance you get, uh, yeah, you still get that butterflies uh, in the stomach and it's still every, yeah, every game is a big occasion. Um, so, yeah, no, very, very excited for, for the weekend. Yes, but tell us a little bit about the journey the last year from somebody who was clearly a very talented rugby player, but maybe wasn't at that point figuring on a Springbok horizon. Now, all of a sudden, you're starting for the Springboks. Uh, what do you think has made the difference? What's got you to where you find yourself now this week as a starting Springbok? Yeah, um... I think when I went over, I sort of made a little bit of a mind shift, um, not overthinking everything too much, uh, just playing rugby, um, enjoying it. I think that's that's a part that I somehow, I don't know how I, I sort of lost it. But, um, you know, I think I really just started enjoying my rugby again, um, enjoying the environment I was in. And not that the cheetahs was in the great environment, just a little bit of a horizon change for me. And um, yeah, I think 
every I, I've well, we've got a lot of great people at Leicester, and they all help in a in some way or another to to form me sort of and in, into who I have become now. So I mean, uh, I can't take any credit for it really. I mean, the people around me are brilliant. <laughs> As a very modest and, and humble man, uh, and, uh, and very gentle and soft spoken, and of course you find him on the rugby field. In which case, you do not want to be at the bottom of the same rut. Uh, I know you guys have got uh, training to get off to, and, uh, and you've already given us so much of your time. Uh, so, just very quickly, Marco, in, in wrapping up, uh, we've got people watching this: rugby fans, Lions fans, Springbok fans, all over the world. Uh, just your message to all of them: uh, what it means to you, to the Springboks, to know that even if the stand aren't full there are still so many people watching this series watching it so closely and watching it with so much emotion yeah i mean uh if you look at it it's actually five countries uh on one rugby field so uh yeah it's a massive occasion it only comes every 12 years so uh, yeah there's no people understand or support us but uh yeah we know all over the world uh people are gonna watch it every game um from the series and uh yeah, I mean, it's two, uh, yeah, in, in Europe, or oh, UK, it's uh, four countries um, against South Africa. So, yeah, it's a lot of people, people want to watch this, this game and there's a lot on um, on the table. So, yeah, that's a big occasion. I think the people are excited to watch. We are certainly excited. It is a huge Saturday in store uh, with two wonderful rugby teams with so much history and heritage and staffed by some incredible players of which you are two thereof. So uh, to both of you, thank you very much indeed, Marco. Enjoy the game on Saturday. The very best of luck. Uh, and Jasper, to you in particular, uh, it's such a special occasion. Uh, there are going to be uh, lots of us cheering extra hard when we see you run out on the field on Saturday. Uh, as mentioned a little earlier, uh, we're going to be sending down those commemorative magnums of wine. And we'll make sure you get one as well there, Marco, so Jasper doesn't have to share his. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, thank you very much. Good luck sleeping Friday night, Jasper. Uh, enjoy the game <laughs> today. Right, right. Thank you so much for giving us some wonderful rugby. Uh, thank you. Thank Thanks you a lot, much. guys. There we go. Marco Mastada and Jasper Visa, uh, just two fantastic, fantastic rugby players joining us here at Bosch. Now, that does this time wrap us up. So, Jacques, again, thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, if you would like to try some of the wine we've been trying this evening, I can't think why not it's lovely, uh, then head over to the Boschendal website and have a look in particular for that commemorative magnum that celebrates this Castle Lager like British and Irish Lions tour and does so not just in style and elegance, how good does that bottle look, but also has some fabulous wine inside from one of South Africa's most gifted winemakers. That does us from Boschendal. Now Jacques and I are both feeling a bit self-conscious, so we're up to the gym for the next three hours. Uh, wherever you are in the world, hopefully there's a glass of Boschendal in wine in hand this weekend for the game, it's Test 2, British and Irish Lions versus the Springboks. Enjoy the game, enjoy the rugby. I hope you're enjoying the wine as well. And from here in Washington, from Jacques and myself, Dan Nicholl, cheers and thank you. Mm -hmm.